Hey guys, how's it going today? A um, little bit of a different video today. We're upstairs in the little bit of a warmer room, not in the fish room. <laughs> Even though there's still a beta tank behind me, we got a problem. <laughs> um, today I'm going to show you our mantises. Uh, we were doing awesome at the beginning. Um, we had five that we separated from each other that we were growing out separately. And now we're down to two. Stuff happens. One got bent butt and tried to molt and that didn't go well. One, we woke up one morning and it just didn't have a head and there's nothing in there that could have eaten it. So, you know, stuff happens just like you guys know in the fish hobby. You just, sometimes things happen, right? We've had these guys for four months. We've been feeding them great. We've done a lot of research. I do a lot of research on everything I keep. Uh, we keep the humidity where it's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, we got two nice ones left. I'm gonna show you one of them today. Um, the other one has um, a wing problem. They just grew their wings this last molt. So I think they're still trying to figure it out as well. His wings are just kind of curled at the end. So I just don't want to bother him at all. So I'll show you this guy and yeah, let's get to the video. Hope you guys like the mantises. <laughs> so here's one of our little praying mantises. This is the one that's been doing the best for us this whole time. As you can see, like I, I don't have small hands and they're, uh, they're a pretty good size. <laughs> um, so these guys like their humidity because they are these are the giant Chinese. So um, they like their humidity up there a little bit. Anywhere from that kind of 50% to even 70. I, I do boost it up every day. They're super intuitive. So if you have a bug and you move and stuff, their eyes will always follow. They're a very smart bug. <laughs> I know a lot of people hate bugs and especially bugs this size, but they are just absolutely awesome. Uh, just so cool. I'm still kind of dumbfounded myself, to be honest. We hatched them four months ago, me and the girlfriend, and they were just, just little guys. They actually hatch out. They hatch out of a little egg sack. It looks exactly like this. We stuck a toothpick through ours so that we could fasten it to the to the branches. And I mean, as you can see, 300 came out of this. So that's a little bit bigger. Um, so you put the toothpick, because the mom, it, it actually comes out like spray foam. So the mom puts it around a branch and it hardens around the branch. And the part that faces down, hopefully the camera will focus. Uh, I'm not behind it right now. <laughs> Still learning all this stuff. But the gills are on the bottom. And all of the babies will slowly wedge their way out of the gills. And you pretty much, you get it. If there's like 14 bucks, they're super cheap. A lot of people put them out in their gardens just to handle mosquitoes and flies and other bugs, which actually works awesome as well. Um, but we just decided we wanted a little, a little interesting, um, another little interesting hobby at home besides the fish. But these guys, these guys are just so cool. I love feeding them. We fed them uh, fruit flies at the beginning and then we went to just really small mealworms. We sell at my work, so I figured I'd get those and try them out. So we went to small mealworms, and then we tried superworms. Superworms are pretty tough, and they do like to bite back, so we don't do superworms too often, but they have taken a superworm. Um, and then pretty much just crickets. And a lot of people say don't feed them crickets because they're dirty and stuff like that, but it's not really easy for us where we live here uh, to outsource anything else. So crickets are just kind of the easiest for us. So we tried and you know, we did, we did lose three in this last month. So I don't really know if that was the cause. I think one was just, and you know, like, like I said, stuff happens. One with the bent butt, that just kind of happens. I, I did as much research as I could to figure out why that happened. And a lot of people said that they don't know. They just happen and if they can molt successfully, sometimes they can just heal themselves but he did not molt successfully to say the least. But yeah, so when they molt too, they hang upside down. Like these guys are super sticky. As you see, <clears throat> they hang right upside down and it splits in their head and they do this little wiggle thing and they actually come out of their skin. So they're a super, super cool bug. Yeah, and like I said, they just got these beautiful wings this last week. This guy's only, this is the third day after molt. So he's only eaten uh, one mealworm. I don't like to, I like to let them harden a little bit first just because, I'll try and show you here. Right on their front little claw things, they actually have little teeth on there. And the teeth, actually when they grab onto the cricket, the, 
it, it, trust me, it's not going anywhere. If these guys can hold on to a super worm, I use my I use my feeding tongs, and like you know, you can feel squeezing it together how kind of tough it is. And these guys can actually hold them together if they grab it properly. So even at this size, they are they're tough. So these are the giant Chinese. So these guys can essentially get between four and, and six inches. Um, now, unfortunately, both of the ones we got are males. Males are going to grow the wings all the way down past their butt, and the females are only going to get wings to here. But females are going to be a lot larger than males. So that's how I know we have males is because of the wings, and they're not as big as they should be. So these guys, they might hit that four inch mark. I'd say they're with their claws out right now. I'd say he's about three, maybe three and a quarter. But just such a beautiful little creature. Like, just so pretty, so smart. You can see his head turning to take a look at what's going on. They're super inquisitive. So yeah, that'll be the mantis video today, guys. Um, next one, I'll do feeding videos. I actually have a video of them eating all the way from when they were first born. So I'm gonna have a big compilation of, of all of the life cycles and all, um, feeding them with each different size of the molt. So that'll be one of the next videos. I just kind of wanted to show you what, the, what it was about in their enclosures. You can see this one, we just have a little pothos. Just a little pothos growing in there and then just some sticks this is this is ultimately way too big for a mantis you only need your enclosure two times the size of their body the length of their body so that they can molt successfully but honestly this guy has done the best and he's been the biggest enclosure uh, we hand feed them every time so it's not a huge deal for food but uh, yeah I hope you guys have a great day I hope you liked the video and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, He'll see you next time. <laughs> Take care, guys.